Guys, <laughs> I wanted to make a video on this because no one else seems to be talking about it. You look online on YouTube and there seems to be no one else talking about pricing, how much to charge, how to charge more money, what's average, what's fair. And I'll tell you where it comes from. Whenever I seem to post a video, uh, in the comments, I get people asking me, oh, how much did you charge for that? What was that worth? And basically, the reason these people ask these questions is one, because they're nosy. <laughs> but aren't we all? Everyone wants to know anyway, right? But the, the main reason is because people look at the job that you've done and they've done a similar job and they want to know what did you get because they're comparing it to what they got to see if they're about right, if they could, could have got more money or not. So, rather than replying to each of these people individually, I thought I'd make a quick video for you. And let you know what took me 20 years of practicing, learning, thinking about, you know, research, and tell you, you know, basically how I figure out my pricing these days. And how it's vastly different from how I used to do it. So, first off, let's just talk quickly about how I think most people start out pricing work when they first sort of go off doing uh, private work. So, just to quickly clear things up as well, this video is all about uh, domestic pricing. So, um, you know, if, if you sight lads and you've got lads, you know, working for big house builders and stuff, it won't work like this. They'll be sort of like, you know, price per meter and they'll be looking at how cost per unit and it's basically um, who can supply the most labour when there's a push on and what's the cheapest price they can do it for. So you could be the cheapest, but you've only got five lads. They're not going to use you. Um, if you've got 500 lads and you're the cheapest, then they probably will use you and you can sort of do it cheaper the more lads you've got because... You can make smaller margins on the lads, but still, it. anyway, th this is not about site pricing, okay? We're talking about domestic pricing now, because that's what my game is. I, I don't do site work anymore, and I never, I never ran sites. I never had loads of lads working on building sites for me, so I can't. I'm not an authority on that. I don't know about it. I can only tell you what I know about, which is domestic pricing. Now, I tell you how I started off pricing jobs and how I think most fellas start off pricing their jobs and probably still do and then i'll tell you a different way so from my understanding the majority of people they've worked for somebody else they've served as an apprentice for somebody else and they've been getting paid a set sort of wage for that person they go off on their own and let's just use a, I'm going to pull a number out of the air. So, you know, we're just going to use a nice, simple number. Let's say when you finish coming your apprenticeship, you're earning £120 a day. That's what you've been getting paid because you're basically working per day for that money. And that's it. Doesn't matter what you did, you just got your day's rate. Now, when you sort of go off on your own and you start looking at jobs, what usually happens is. You look at a job, you work out how long it is going to take you to do the job, you times that by your 120, because that's what you believe that you're worth, and you add your materials on, and you go and do your job. Now, what tends to happen is that price that you charge is basically the minimum. I mean, you probably your lifestyle is sort of around that sort of figure, and if you don't earn that, then you feel like you're suffering, right? So... That ends up being like your minimum sort of price. So what you end up doing is, or what a lot of fellas seem to do, is they go around and they're doing jobs for basically the bare minimum that they can possibly do it. Which I wouldn't say is the best way of doing it, but it what it's what seems to be how the majority of people are doing it. And the only sort of way that people's wages seem to go up is when they compare themselves to somebody else. And that's why I think a lot of people ask me in the comments, what have you charged? Because, for instance, they could be going around doing a job for £120 a day. <clears throat> and then they look at a job I've done, and they can sort of say, it's took me a day. And they say, well, what, what did you charge, Kirk? And I say, oh, well, you know, that was £140 plus materials. And then they go, oh, you know, we should be charging 140 If he's getting that, I want that. You know, it's like a little jealousy thing. These are just numbers, by the way. These aren't actual figures. 
all right i'm just just saying this is how the mentality works because it's how i mean it's how i used to think you know if i i'm doing a job and i'm working for a builder and then I find out somebody else is working for a different builder and he's on like an extra 30 or 40 pounds a day. Well, I want the same as him. You know, I'm just as fast. I'm just as neat. You know, I want I want that money. Why should he have more than me? That mindset, though, is a bit of a problem because what you tend to always be doing is working for the bare minimum that you can do the job for. So I propose to you a new way, the way I do it now. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like some flipping guru or a wonderful. I don't know because nobody seems to speak about it. No one's putting these type of videos on YouTube for plasterers to sort of tell you how to price jobs up. Or from what I've found, maybe, maybe there are. Maybe they just don't come up in my algorithm. Like, I don't know. But I don't seem to see any of them. And, you know, I'm, I try and be. You've seen all my other videos, right? And... And 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 you know I'm ge I've genuinely got your back. I'm trying to help you. You know that because you you see how much information I try and pack in my other videos to try. And people message me all the time saying your tips and this. And I mean I might not be your cup of tea, and you might not like everything I say, but I try and give you it all as much as I possibly can, and try and be it like a you know a no bullshit kind of guy. You know I'm, I'm genuinely telling you the truth as I see it, or trying to help you as much as I possibly can from my point of view. So. Here's, here's a way I propose that you go forward pricing your jobs. And we will talk about rough sort of figures, but this is, I need you to get on the right mindset first. First thing, straight off the bat, you need to understand what type of customer you've got. I separate them into three types of customer and different ones get priced differently, basically. You have got your first type of customer, and I call them, you know, the people that need it, the people that need the job. They haven't got a choice. They're not picking you because they fancy having the living room done, right? I'm talking about people that have just had a flood, yeah? The ceiling's come through. They've had a fire. They've had to have a rewire that they didn't want, but it's had to happen. Um, you know, plasters just fell off. There's render falling off the outside of the house because it's old. You know, these are like you. These people are getting you because they haven't really got a choice. You know, they they just need your help. So, these are quite important. You got you got to try and look after these guys because you help someone in need and they remember it. So these are going to be like your little publicity. I mean, all your customers you want recommending you, but especially these guys. If you look after someone, always look after the little people. You know. If they're a bit tight and you've got it within your means to help them, then help them, you know. Little old ladies that have had a flood, you know. Single mums and things like that that have, you know, that they've got hardly anything. They're just trying to get by, you know, do the best by the kids. Look after these people because it'll pay dividends as well. Not only are you a good person for doing it, but they'll recommend you. And that helps. That goes a hell of a long way. And we'll talk more on that in a minute. You've got your bad customers. <laughs> These little rascals, hey, if this little piggy could go to market and fuck off and never come back, I'd be happy. Like, but you've got to watch out for these these type. These are your people that are like little money vampires, right? These are very rare, but you tend to sort of tar everyone with the same brush of these people. These people want everything for nothing and they get off on it. They want to chip you down. They want the most out of you for this minimum price and they don't give a monkeys about you they 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 sort of like would be happy if you worked a 12 hour shift for 20 quid for them right they they would actually get a buzz out of it that they've got it so cheap you know like oh yeah and they boast about it to their friends these want everything for nothing and extra fortunately they're quite rare but you end up thinking that this mindset is with everyone but it's not the majority of people, fortunately, they want the best value that they can possibly get for a fair price. And this is where your mindset needs to change of this type of customer. Because they're happy to pay whatever it costs for the best value. If they can afford it, that's that's a, a decided fact. If they can afford it, they'll pay it, but as long as it's the highest value. So... This is what we're going to focus on these people now because what tends to happen is you go to a job 
and you've got your program in your mind of what you believe that you're worth, which is the bare minimum that you can do the job for, and you just times how many days it is and, and, and put your materials on and sometimes you might feel a little bit lucky and put an extra 10 or 20 quid on and feel like you've you know done yourself a massive favour because you've earned an extra 10 or something. Now, <clears throat> a new way of looking at this would be stop thinking what the job's worth for you, the minimum way of doing it, and start thinking what the job's worth to them. Not only that, look at your value as a plasterer. So... If I can expand on this, let me use a little example. When we're talking about everyone wanting the cheapest, right? Think about your car. What car do you drive around in? Have you gone out and bought the cheapest possible car you could get? Like, are you driving a 15-year-old Ford Fiesta that's got holes in the side of it that you could get for 200 quid? Chances are no. What you've done is you've had a pot of money and you've gone out and got the best value car for that pot of money. You've wanted, you've gone, if I've got, most people think, not everybody, but most people go, I've got five grand for the car. They're going to go out and get the best car they can for five grand. Yeah. They're not going to go out and go and buy a 300 pound car and go, oh, I've kept, you know, 4,700. So this is what you've got to sort of get in your mind when you come in to look at your jobs for customers. They'll have in their mind a budget that they're willing to spend to do the job, be it the living room, they're doing the kitchen, they're doing the horse, the bedrooms, or whatever they're doing, they all have sort of got in their mind, we've got this pot of money, and we want to get, you know, we've got to get a new bed, we've got to get a new carpet, we want nice shutter blinds, they want it all fancy, it's always the woman, you know, the, the missus, she wants it all fancy, right? And there's basically a thousand pound left or whatever, you know, there might be eight hundred pounds in the pot left after she's bought those things and they want the plastering doing. Now you could turn up to go and look at the job and you're in your mind, your worth, your price that you're gonna get given is about three hundred quid, say, all in. Or four hundred quid, right? But her pot's eight hundred quid. Now if you're if you provide the value, which we'll talk about how to increase your value. If you increase your value to such an extent, yeah, you could do it for three or four hundred quid, but if you were valuable and you said eight hundred and there's eight hundred pounds in the pot, will you get the job? Because when you go and buy a think of it like buying a car, you know, you've got your pot of money, you want to go and get the best value you can for that money. So what you've got to look at doing is increasing your value. <clears throat> now remember you've got your customers in need and they're not they just want help them out if you can, right? But when you've got a customer that wants the best value that they can get, what they want is to know that you are the neatest plaster that they can get for their money. So concentrate, rather than trying to sort of catch up with other people and what they're pricing, start trying to improve your skills as much as you possibly can and become the neatest, best plaster you are capable of becoming. Practice things, drop less, Check your walls, stay late. Right, this is the thing as well. You have to provide the value before you get the money. You don't charge more money and say, when I'm getting this much money, I will do better jobs. It doesn't work like that. You've just got to start becoming better because you need to build your reputation up. You've got to have a reputation for being the best around and that's it. You are like, maybe not better than, don't worry about being better than everybody. Be the best that you can possibly be. Right, forget other people and what they're doing. You be the best you can possibly be. The neatest, the cleanest, the most reliable. You know, what you, you want to sort of... When I was starting out, if a job went wrong or I had issues on a job, I would stay until the job was right. I would keep going back until the job was right. I've done jobs in the past that have cost me more money. I've worked two days for free on a job that was only meant to take one day. You know, I've learned the hard way. I've gone to reskim a ceiling that was all lime wash and the whole thing's come down, right? Because that's how you learn the hard way. But then I've gone back, paid to overboard the ceiling, rounded it all in, gone back the day after and skimmed it all for free <laughs> because I've already, I'm, I'm honouring me. Now, I'm not recommending that you go and start doing jobs for free. I'm just telling you how I, I sort of learned the hard way. But, but by doing that, 
by by doing that people have recognized he does a mint job it doesn't matter what happens he will do a mint job so you're improving your skills become an expert in the field become an absolute expert on the house types that you're working on so if you're working on victorian houses do as much reading as you possibly you know think about your local area where the majority of your work is start becoming a bit of a, an expert you know are the houses solid brick walls why are they solid brick walls what are they originally plastered with lime right lime's breathable so if we put sand and cement on are we gonna have damp issues is that why there's damp issues because it was originally plastered with lime so how do we overcome that learn about damp Re you've got a wonderful tool the internet you can literally google anything and the answers are there i mean you can literally google how to make a spaceship right and you can learn how to make a spaceship this has never been possible before in the whole of humanity you've got all the information in the world at your fingertips so it's very easy to just learn about you know common problems in houses built in the 1960s educate yourself just just learn a bit about you know the problems that you're going to come up against because when you go to look at jobs you've got all this knowledge and it sort of oozes out of you to an extent the customer's know that they're in the presence of an expert who knows exactly what he's talking about because you're telling them exactly what the common problems are what you've seen before you understand why this has happened you're an expert you're increasing your value so now you're a fantastic plasterer you're an expert leave jobs immaculate leave them cleaner than what you found them even if the house is dirty it doesn't matter just leave it mint every single job never leave it messy you're building a reputation for being impeccable. Punctuality. This is one of the easiest things to do. So many people get it wrong. Not now, this day and age, this is this is crucial. This is so easy to be the best at this. Every single tradesman that I've sort of heard about is renowned for letting people down, not turning up on time. No shows. It's not hard. When someone rings you to get the details off them, you can ask them to texture their details. And when you say you're going to get back to them, phone them back or text them back when you say you will, right? Turn up exactly the right time that you said you were going to be there. It'll be like a breath of fresh air to people because they won't. Trust me, people don't experience this anymore. Everybody is... The only person on time these days is your Amazon delivery driver. It's the only fella that shows up. <laughs> Everybody else lets you down. Trust me, if you don't believe me, try and get someone to come and do a job at your house. It's a flipping nightmare. So, if you're if you're spot on with your timing, and when you turn up, you're friendly and likeable, you're chatty, you know, you get to know them, they feel comfortable with you, all, all this increases your value. So, it's very easy to sort of charge more money then so going back to the pricing here's what i would recommend you do you're increasing your value so when you turn up to a job let's take a look at the job you know your minimum walk away price now they've got a pot of money and you just need to make sure that you're within that sort of pot now I would sort of say, you know what the minimum you can do the job for? Just go up in increments if you want. Put yourself on an extra £100 a day. You'll be surprised how many people will just say, yep, yeah, sound. At the end of the day, you're the best in the field. You're an expert. Now, I'm not saying rip people off, but you're doing all these things to increase your value that they can't get anywhere else. Plasterers that don't turn up on Monday because they're bladdered still, that have issues at home with the missus and let you down, that leave crap all over the front garden, right? These people are ten a penny. They can get these anywhere. So you do all the things I'm saying, turn up on time and all the rest of it, and I have a you know reputation for being immaculate. Charge them double what you normally charge. Take your day rate in your head and double it. You'd be surprised because you'll get the job and you're not ripping people off because they don't have to go with you. You're not going to twist their arm. You're not going to do like, you know, sort of, no offence travellers. You're not going to do what the travellers do. Start like, you know, knocking on the door every five minutes. Do you want the job done? Do you want the job? Don't do that. You know, just put your price across. Leave them with it. 
you'd be surprised how many people just go, yeah, we can afford him, he's wonderful, let's just get him to do the job. I've had countless people tell me, you're the most expensive. We had three quotes, you're the dearest one, but you knew what you were talking about and we felt the most comfortable going with you. There you go, that's how it works. Now, if you're a little bit higher than their budget, I don't want to make this video too long. I've got another video. Um, I'll link it at the end, right? I've got another video about all little things that you can do to sort of make sure you get the job every time. But just seeing as you're watching this one, I'll just tell you quickly. If you give the price, I always give the price there and then face to face. I just tell them straight off the bat, right? It's going to cost X amount of money, yeah? I know me more. I know me walk away price, me bare minimum price that I can do it for. I know what I have to earn to sort of survive. I know what I want for the job, and, I, and I'm confident, and I've and I, I, I explained everything, and that's the price I put in. And I tell them there and then because I wait to see the customer's reaction. I wait to see their face. If they look horrified straight away, then you know, right? Hang on a minute. Well, this doesn't normally happen. Usually. You're gonna put your price in, and they'll say, "Great, uh, when when can when when can you start? When can you fit us in?" Ninety percent of the time, that's what's gonna to happen to you, right? If they can afford you, they're just gonna go for it. Or they'll say, "I've got to check with the husband or the missus." If they say to me, "I'm gonna check with the husband or the missus," or if they look shocked, here's what you do: Is that somewhere where you were thinking? Is that price roughly where you were sort of, you know, thinking it was going to cost? Because now you're going to find out what they wanted to pay. So you've got your minimum price. You've put your price in here. Now they're probably going to come in somewhere in the middle. So you could do the job for 500 quid. You've told them you want 800 quid. And you say, was that somewhere where you were thinking? And they might say to you, oh, do you know what we thought it was going to be about 700 you know what your minimum price is. It's still a lot more. So you could just say, don't normally do this. Tell you what, meet you halfway. Can you make it sort of like, can you make 720? Chances are they'll just shake your hand on the dot. Yep, yeah, job's yours. Crack on. They might be adamant. That might be literally the limit. They might only have 700 quid and you could save them. I'll tell you what, listen, I really like you. I'd love to do the job for you. I'll... Look, I'll just do it for 650 if you can sort of like clear the room and empty the room out for me. Okay? You were going to get four. You were going to go to four. Now you've just got 650. That is the mindset that I want you to sort of adopt when you go to look at jobs. Stop sort of looking what the job is worth to you and start thinking about the value you can give them. It's not just about the plastering, it's everything else that goes with it. It's you as a person. Now, another sort of thing is. <clears throat> I've got a reputation where, where, where I'm based. Um, it's, mad, it's mad saying this, right? It doesn't, still doesn't feel comfortable saying this, but I've heard so many times customers saying, oh, yeah, we know you're expensive. We know you're expensive. We've been told you're dear, right? But I'm never out of work. <laughs> so everybody knows it. It's not a secret. People say to me all the time, yeah, you're the most dear, but we wanted you, you know. It happens all the time, so it doesn't. You don't have to be the cheapest, okay? Now, for your people that need the job done, the ones that are in desperate need, if you've charged more money over here and you've got a little bit of profit built up in your business, because that's all it is. No business runs at cost all the time because when hard times come, they can't weather the storm; they go bust. If think of it, you're as a sole trader, you always want to you, in your mindset is be the cheapest. If every business in the world ran at just cost. Permanently, as soon as there was a bit of a downturn, they'd all go bump. Every business has to make profit. You've got to make profit to weather the storms. So if you've sort of put a bit of profit in your kitty, when you get the little old dear whose kitchen ceiling's collapsed, or the single mum who's just had to have, you know, no offence to single, I'm not trying to say that you're poor people, I'm just trying to think of, you know, in my mind, people that are, you know, need a little bit more, um, they're a bit more in need than say someone that's just retired and they've got, you know, a big golden handshake from work. When you come across these people, you can really help them out. You know, you can afford to do it. You've, you've just earned a couple of thousand quid 
and their little patch in, in the kitchen seal and you can say listen love tell you what don't you even worry about it my little dear you know little 80 year old woman don't you worry sweetheart i'll sort it out for you and you can nip in there Saturday morning and do it for nothing you can afford to do it can't you <laughs> and you'll feel great for doing it as well so it's not all about trying to just rip people off it's about making profit in your business and, and being a good person helping out where you can adding value being helpful it's not it's in everything you do you know in I sort of have my customers and, and they almost become like friends with me. You know, I'll, I'll do anything to sort of help them out. You know, I'm always there on the end of the phone if they need advice, if they need other trades. I know people in the trades that are good guys that will look after them, that won't, you know, do a dodgy job. They're not the cheapest. And I tell them they're not the cheapest. Do you want the cheapest or do you want the best? People want the best for what they can afford. Ah, So I'm just, uh, I'm going to just think now, if there's anything I've sort of missed out that I wanted to tell you. That was it, yes. We did say we were actually going to talk some actual real figures. So, I'm not going to tell you what I earn because it's different all the time. Some days it's a little bit, some days it's a little bit more. Some, You know, it varies, but you get in the mindset that I have when I go and look at these, these jobs. In my experience, most tradesmen are on anywhere from £200 a day to £300 a day, somewhere in between. Right, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's always going to be fellas that are going round that are doing it on the weekend that have got another job and they're doing it for a hundred pounds. Right, why they would want to work cheaper, I don't know because you can get more money. I think, I think you can actually lose a lot of jobs by being too cheap because people think there's something wrong. So, if you're one of these guys that are sort of going round and you've got another job or you're retired and you're just doing the odd little job, then yeah, help your people in need, but. You could be costing yourself. You could be losing a lot. Of, here's the thing. People lose work by being too cheap. And they think it's because they're too expensive. And then they go cheaper. Oh, my word. I'll tell you something as well. Customers, if you feel sort of uneasy as well, they pick up on it. If you ever try to lie to your missus and she just knows you're lying, right? It's Customers pick up when, when you're not comfortable sort of saying what, what you're saying. So, um, don't... Don't try and blag people, you know, genuinely believe what you're worth. So charge what you genuinely believe you're worth. And if that you're not happy with that, increase your value, okay? If you're not happy with what you're charging, increase your value. Do more work, do, do better work, do cleaner work, become more of an expert, and you will believe you are worth more money, and customers will pick up on that and pay you more money. If you try to pretend, if you, if you know that you don't know what you're doing, if you know, like, I've never done this before, I'm just taking a chance here, and you've come out of some wild number, they are going to pick up on it. Like, when you try and tell a porky to your missus, they're just going to see straight through you. So, but look, if you're one of these guys, just going back to the, what I was saying to you, if you're one of these guys sort of running around doing little jobs, you've got another job and you're doing a bit of plastering on, on the weekends and that, you can lose work by being too cheap. And there's no point being too cheap. I mean, it doesn't really benefit anybody it doesn't benefit you because you're just selling yourself short sort of lowers the prices for that the industry to a to a degree you know so charge you know an average sort of price if if, if you want a guide of average sort of prices and you want to get a feel for it most plasters are on 200 to 300 pound a day now there's nothing stopping you charging a lot more than that just saying you, you can you can get 400 pound a day you could get five depends what the job is depends what your value is as a person and how much that customer values you and what the job is if they've just got a hundred grand kitchen yes people have a hundred grand kitchens if they've just had a hundred grand kitchen and you turn up to do the job the plastering job and you uh, and you're gonna plaster the whole kitchen in two days and you say i'll just have 200 quid mate you ain't gonna get the job because you, they know they're thinking what 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 is wrong with him? Why is he so cheap? They don't want cheap. They don't. They want the best. They want the best, and they'll, they'll pay what it costs to have the best. So don't be. You can lose work by being too cheap. Um, was there anything else? Minimum prices for little jobs. <clears throat> I have a cut off price. Um, I will not come to your house to patch up around a light switch for less than a certain price. 
So for me, um, I, again, unless it's someone in need and you can afford to help them out, but the average person that just, you know, they just want something doing, um, they might have had a couple of tiles taken off for the kitchen splashback or whatever it is. I can't do anything for less than 100 quid. It's not worth me getting in my van and coming to your house for anything less wages than 100 quid because I've got to, I've got to seal the wall, I've got to mix the plastic, even if you use accelerator. I'd rather stay in bed than be anywhere, even for two hours for less than 100 quid. So give you, a, your price might be different to mine. Give yourself, you might charge more, give yourself a bare minimum and tell them on the phone if, if you don't feel, you know, just... I've had people say we've had a we've had a plug socket moved and we've just got a little hole in the wall. Can you come and patch it? Say so yes. So it's only little. Take you five minutes to say. I get that. Uh, just to let you know before I come out though, I'll come and do it for you. I'll give you the price and do the job there and then. But I can't do anything for less than a hundred pounds. So it's going to be at least a hundred pounds plus the materials, whatever it is. I've never ever had anybody say oh, it doesn't matter. Everybody seems to understand that your time is of some value and they're happy to pay it i mean i'm not saying that there's not people out there that won't pay it remember the the middle type of people don't we <laughs> these little rascals that you want to stay away from so I have a minimum price as well um if it's a half a day so let's say there was if you're doing a heart one gauge you've only got a couple of walls to do doesn't necessarily have mean you have to charge exactly half of what it's worth you know what else are you going to do for the day remember charge what the value is worth to them you can always come down in price but you can't go up people don't people don't like it at the end of the job if you try and charge them more money so never do that it's just bad practice if you know your job inside out and you know what potentially could go say that say something goes wrong with a job i always explain to the customers look we'll do this this and this I'm concerned about the background. We may have an issue there. In that situation, we'll have to do this or this option or this option, and it could potentially cost that, that or that if that happens. As long as you explain to them, and when it happens, that they, they agree to that and they understand that, then they don't mind it. But you can't really get to the end of a job and just go, oh, by the way, we have to do this. It's an extra 100 quid or an extra... People will hate you for it, so never, ever do that either. Um, last thing as well. The only sort of exception... The only sort of exception to all this that sort of breaks the rules a little bit is if you are getting um, repeat work from, I don't know, a, a conservatory company or a builder or, you know, and they're giving you continuous work. Um, them guys, <clears throat> they need to sort of price you into their price. So they've got to sort of get a feel for where you're coming from. Again, you know your bare minimum price. You know what the minimum you can work for is. Don't give them that number. Sort of go a little bit higher, and if they shoot you down a little bit, well, fair enough. You know, when you when you're working for other businesses, things are a little bit different. So, if your usual price is two hundred and fifty pounds a day, then you might want to say to your builder, "Listen, you know, I'm quite happy to come and do your work on a sort of, you know, you know what I'll get done in a day. They sort of get a feel for you, so they can they need to they need to be able to price you into a job without having to consult you every single job that they do. I mean, every builder that goes around and prices an extension, he can't have every tradesman come round and look at the plans with him and tell him how much they want. He needs to get a rough idea for you. So if once he's got to know you a little bit, you know, and he knows that you know you want two fifty a day bare minimum, say for instance, see shoot it, you know, three hundred. See if he'll give you two eighty, two seventy, whatever. You know, if he knocks you down a ten, it doesn't really matter, does it? You're still more than your bare minimum, but you're going to get repeat work, which. This can sort of be your bread and butter until you get going, you know. Ideally, you want to be just working your own jobs for the public all the time. But sometimes it's nice to sort of have a bit of repeat work where it takes the pressure off you because you're not out quoting for these jobs. So you end up losing a bit of profit, but you're saving a lot of time because you're not going out pricing them, dealing with the customers. All you're doing is just sort of turning up, doing your job and getting paid. So that sort of breaks the rules a bit. You can sort of do them a bit cheaper and not sort of shoot for the sky with them because, you know, these guys, they're doing that. They're making the profits. They're just as long as you're getting what you want and maybe a little bit extra and just sort of be happy with that, you know. And as as you get more and more busy, I mean, it's up to you if you want to continue working for these. I would say if you find decent firms that give you continuous work 
and they're fair and they don't mess you around with your money and they don't give you the run around then they're worth sort of keeping in with and looking after i've got firms that i i don't charge the earth to i just charge them a fair rate because they give me continuous work and they're a pleasure to work for sometimes it's nice to be able to just sort of switch off and just work for somebody else for a couple of days and not have to think about pricing and stuff you know but if they're paying and you've got plenty of work, then just drop them because they'll drop you. If, if these sort of people are always searching for the, you know, they're always trying to chip you down. As soon as you find someone cheaper, you'll be gone. The, these guys can end up being your middle guys that, you know, you've got to watch out for. That so, Some builders, they just want, they just want blood. So, I mean, if you can afford to swerve them, swerve them. Anyway, I think that's covered everything. I don't think there's anything else I want to tell you. Um, we did, I did sort of briefly mention about um, how to price a job, um, sort of techniques of dealing with the customers, you know, how to speak to customers. Sort of uh, a bit more to build on this video, and I'll um, show you that. It's a video that's going to pop up here. Um, if, you, if you're enjoying this topic and you want to go more into it, then watch this video here, uh, and that will cover other aspects. I think I've covered everything. If not, then ask me in the comments and I'll let you know. Guys, if you enjoyed that video and I've helped you, hopefully I've helped you, hopefully you earn more money. I want you to earn more money, okay? Now, I also want you to understand something. Plastering on YouTube is a very, very small niche, okay? There's other subjects that get a lot more attention and a lot more views. Now, YouTube pays you on like per thousand views <laughs> trust me google it go and google how much you make per thousand views trust me it's flipping peanuts right and i get earache off my old lady my missus for being in here making these videos so much so if you would like to help me to continue to help you because literally i get nothing out of this whatsoever apart from the pleasure of doing it for the goodness of my heart but if you'd like to say thank you because you're getting something out of it you're getting tips you're getting information that you wouldn't otherwise get and you appreciate it and you'd like to buy me a beer you can literally click on the little link in the description and send me over a couple of quid and it's much appreciated i mean i do like beer as well so. <laughs> listen there's no obligation guys love talking to you ciao Oh, as well, if you want uh, to watch another video on um, how to really get on with your customers, you know, make them feel like they're all friends with you, straight away put your best foot forward, make them feel at ease, yeah, then that's all covered in this video. You can just click on the little link and watch that video next. You have to literally press the screen if you want to watch it. You can't just sit here and it won't just play automatically. You've got to poke that video and you can watch that and uh, again don't forget links in the description for the beer but you should also be able to click on this little link here somewhere and that'll take you straight to the little uh, section where you can go there you go cheers Kirk there's a pint video link you gotta you gotta press them though you won't happen by itself <laughs> I'm going see you later